Coming up in this episode of the KickCast, Armored Core gets a real-time board game, water your plants with just the right amount of water, and use those plastic bottles as your 3D printing filament. All that more coming up, so sit back and relax. It's time for the KickCast. Hey everybody, it is time for the KickCast, the podcast where we go out, find crowdfunding projects, and let you know if you should backtrack or sack them. I am KT Data, one half of the show, and joining me is a man who is not only known in the movie world, now he's well known in the sports world and traveling across <laughs> the world. Not only that, he just one-ups me again this time, looking sexy, sexy, sexy over Skype, the one and only Drew Tyler. <laughs> hey, <laughs> look at this quality. Look how I, good I look, right? I know, this amazing. is amazing. It's amazing what a $1,500 camera would do. <laughs> but yes, I, I've, been pl- I've been traveling the world. That's right. I went to uh, a sport thing that I didn't even know was a thing, yeah, but I got the in. Las Vegas Summer League. Yeah, well, apparently that's kind of a big deal. Did, did so you I see the to... Jazz play, our local team? Uh-huh. They sucked, saw, but okay, yeah. They did, yeah, they didn't have a great time there, <laughs> but I saw them. I saw um, Spur. Like, no, who was it? I saw a lot of a lot of people yeah. play, but we got to interview some of the players, so that was kind of fun. And the hardest part was getting the players, the new players, like these guys are getting drafted, fresh out of high, you right? know, college, you know, fresh, fresh out, out of college. college. The hardest part was getting them from their arena up to the uh, starters set, because that's where I did my live stuff. Was on the starters set, which apparently is a show on ESPN. Yeah, and that's the sh- did you started meet as Jack? a podcast, did by the way. They Jack? started as a podcast. Did you meet Jack? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> But uh, but we used their set for our live stuff and just getting players from the arena up to our place. They, kids are just mobbing them. Everybody's trying to get it, you know, signing things. Like everybody just, so it was a did, mad Did house. you do the cool thing like, the, you know, the bouncer? Out of our way. We got to get through. We got to get through. I was, I was on the receiving <laughs> end. So, but the uh, producer that was pulling them to us, she, she, was, she did not love it. She was like, that is so hard. That is just not fun at all. I was like, just do it. It's gonna be great. Let's just do it. Anyway, I did. I did that sports thing. It was kind of fun. I'm I'm jelly because you know these are like the future NBA stars, that's and you'll be like, yeah, I met him. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. I shook his hand. I, I put a mic on him. And <laughs> no, it was a good time. It was it was a really cool trip because even though it was a work trip, I was able to take my girls, oh, and yeah. so I got off work at like six or seven on Friday and Saturday, and we went to a buffet and we oh. went to go see see things do things so that was that was so did you go have any asian food no we well i i chose asian food because we went to studio b buffet in the m resort and so tasty so i did i ate asian buffet oh it's, it's great and the funny thing is i don't go to buffets anymore um really no i mean you, you go to vegas I, I go to vegas like twice a year now <laughs> on there so you know i like but i like the asian food so if you guys want to know about the food Check out Noms. I talk about it constantly. Yes, you're <laughs> surrounded by Pop Tarts as we speak. <laughs> yes, Pop Tarts. All in preparation. And That's I, show prep, folks. And, and what's crazy is I found a box of Girl Scout cookies that somehow have survived this long. Oh, wow. They're not going to survive that much longer. <laughs> 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 all, right. Life. all right, guys. So if this is your first time watching the show, first of all, welcome. Um, we usually do waste this much time just chit-chatting. Yeah, We're and, just catching up. Yeah, cool. and Drew is the awesome part of the show. I'm just here to press buttons, really. Um, <laughs> He's like the spine, and I'm the pages with the illustrations. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Read under, us. So before we go into our projects, we have two quick news. Um, this one's tangentially related to okay. Kickstarter on there. Okay. So, Drew, do you remember, oddly enough, two years ago, the potato salad Kickstarter? Oh, yeah. Was that two years ago? Yes. We've been yeah, doing was, this show was... for that long. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this crazy guy that just said, you know what? I'm going to make potato salad and you guys are going to fund it. And it blew up and it went crazy. And so somehow he had to figure out how to get a bite of potato salad to, to I don't know how many backers yeah. there was. Yeah. Was... He, so he ended up raising $55,000 to make to salad. potato salad on there. Right. And one right. of the rewards for all the backers who donated 50% or $50 or more was a cookbook. Oh. Guess what? He's finished the cookbook. <laughs> wow! On there is it all potato salad or is it? Yes, one it is. Salad? It is all potato salads. Um, and all again, all backers fifty dollars or more are getting one of these, and it's a really good looking cookbook too. It does look good. Um, it's called Peace, good. Love, and Potato Salad okay, Cookbook. Love title. Twenty four different recipes of potato salad that you can get. Um, he did it with a uh, Teresa Blackburn, who's. He's like, I'm a mediocre cook. She's the one who kind of knew all the stuff. But they actually separated it out into kind of different flavors. So there's like your traditional ones and there's like your summer uh, ones. Yeah. So four seasonal genres, beginning with the summer and the classic potato salad. 
and includes variants like grilled flank, steak and potato salad, toast, tostados, tostados, blue cheese, wow. baby beet potato salads, salt cooked fingerling potato salad, and garlic cilantro mojo. I mean, that looks oh, awesome. Wow. And I, this is a pretty looking book too. How many pages so, does it say? Uh, I'm not sure, but you can actually it buy it. Good. You you can you can buy this for $17 yeah. on their website. Um on there. Uh, it looks good. And it starts out with uh yeah, it doesn't tell you how many pages on there. But No, I I'm, I but see my I'm, share of cookbooks obviously with my uh with, but, with Peach and her cooking. But this is this is a really good looking book and uh and I just made flank steak twice this last yeah, week. I, I'm very good at it now. Yeah, so like this is this is crazy, you know, because you always hear those stories about projects not delivering and stuff, but this guy did, and he, you know, there's just some love. Like, look at these pictures and stuff. He he has a story of the Kickstarter, which ended up it was a joke, and he actually added the cookbook when he was out with friends and they were pretty drunk. <laughs> and but like this is this is actually what came out of it, and which is is great. Um, and wow, like that's a this is a lot of. So this is Teresa. She's kind of the genius behind it. Looks but, like 24 recipes, right? Wow, Bro- they put a lot of previews in here. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised on their day. So make sure you guys go check it out if you haven't, or if you're your backer, let us know if you've gotten this cookbook. I'm, I I might buy it, even though I don't know how to cook worth crap. Um, <laughs> this might help you. I love <laughs> that he has a story in there. I love that he teamed up with somebody that knew what they were doing on this side of things. This could have been this could have yeah. been really bad. Like it could have really flopped this up poorly but i like i like this this is well done and for 17 bucks yeah it's a great gift because oh, this is after he's he did the potato fest he donated tons of money to um to a charity to actually fight hunger in ohio and oh, then he oh. made this book on top of it so it's, it's pretty good he he ended up doing two other kickstarters i know or at least helping out with them um on there and now he's like he's like i'm glad i'm done with this it allows me to work on other projects now Right, no, I love it. Oh, there. Drew, where'd your video go? <laughs> oh, there, he's back. Don't worry about me. I'm coming back. He's back. All right. Okay. So that was that was kind of the potato cookbook. Uh, apparently, I, this nice-looking, r- really expensive camera that now needs to be refocused also has... Batteries? A battery that needs to be plugged <laughs> in if it's not charged. <laughs> I, I I love that. I've done that before. We're like, why am I not getting video through this? The, it's on and stuff. I'm like, oh, wait, I didn't plug it in. <laughs> All right. So I always like those good stories. Now kind of to project creators, we always hear about you got to submit your project to Kickstarter before you can go live. They have to approve it, right? On there. So Kickstarter actually put out an article on the review process. So it actually tells you what happens when you go through this process um, and the, w- the way, you know, some of the guidelines they have you follow is like, we make sure it falls into one of their f- 15 creative categories, which are fairly broad, might I add, um, and make sure it meets their standard rules. You know, you don't want no por- pornography, except, you know, right. kind of harmful things, things like that. That's um, science. Yeah. Um, and then, so they do that. And then they say they actually accept about 80% of projects that go their way. So you have a high chance of it being accepted. Um, and then so the way the process review works is it takes about 30 hours to review the projects and stuff um, on there. So plan that into your timeline when you're thinking about launching your project. Um, they recommend at least putting, you don't have to have your final um, final uh, project up, but at least put a draft up on there so they can review and have an idea what you're going to do. Um, and there's two stages of its review. First, a computer looks at it. It's an automated review. Okay. If the computer flags it, it takes another um, day or so for a person to actually go through it manually and check. But if you pass the computer review, you're ready to go to launch if you want to. Or you, can, they, or you can... Do they tell you what they look at in that computer review? Like the um, algorithm? I don't think it does. Um, but it, 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 they pretty much say, if you follow the rules and don't include any of the prohibited items, you, you have a good chance of passing. Um and there, so after you've done that, there's only a couple things that you can't update. Your profile name, your funding goal, and your campaign duration, your bank account and verified identity. That makes sense. Um, and any reward that people may have backed on. Um, that, again, makes sense because you don't want to, you know, bait and switch someone, right? Right, right. 
Congratulations, you backed at our fifty dollar level, and now we're sending now you, you get a Cheeto. Nothing, yeah. And they do suggest though, even though after you've been approved, take your time and go live when you're ready. Don't don't feel like there's a rush to do it. I feel like too many people jump right into that. They honestly, they're like, we're approved, let's go. We don't want to miss this, one. you know, whatever it is. But make sure you have everything geared up and ready to go, your momentum, and then then get it when you're yeah ready. on there. So a lot of people race it. Yeah, I I mean, because I know people are like, okay, let's go live. I'm like, but you're not ready yet. Take your time. You know, it's I know you're excited, you're hyped, but if you want to make a good project, you want to do it right. Um, it is true. Know, so do you, I, I do like how they're being a little more transparent on what they're looking at, and they're pretty much saying if you follow your our rules, you have a high chance of it being successful. So, um, uh, like, I don't know. Yeah, that, that, that's a great thing. So before we actually jump on to our full projects, we do have a um, kick shout on here and we actually we actually this is a utah project i actually met this guy i think a couple years ago i don't know time starting to blend in does that mean i'm getting old <laughs> you're when, getting old but it's, all blurry <laughs> yeah. it's just starting to blur yeah. together uh, on there um but it, it's called jail 99 and it is a game where you escape from intergalactic lockup and it's a sci-fi board game for ages 10 and up and two to eight players hopefully if scheduling and everything works out we'll actually get an interview with one of the project creators with this for our next episode. Yeah, we haven't um, done that for a while. That would be very yeah, fun. Yeah, it'll, it'll be fun. And the guys from Spanish Fort Utah, if you're outside of Utah, you have no idea what that means, but it's pretty close to Salt Lake. <laughs> there, so make sure it's you guys... close to Provo, which is close to Salt Lake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there, so, um, GL, so it's j.a.i.l.space99 dot dot on there if you're looking for it. So make sure you guys go yeah. check that out. All right. Amazing. I'm always envious of people who come up with board game ideas. That is something that I just I play them and I go, how did they come up with the rules yeah. that work so well like this? I can't do it. Yeah, it's great. And talking about board games, our first game is actually following the theme. It is a Utah project also, and it is a board game. More so, games? Um, so, Drew, I know you're a big gamer, right? Did you, ever, like did like, you ever play any of the Armored Core games that were out no, from, from software? No. no, I've played a lot of... Uh, Catan and lately the DC games. Well, no, I'm talking about the actual video game Armored Core. When I haven't even played that when, now. So no. it, it's a game, and people will realize quickly why I like it. It's a game where you're piloting giant robots and fighting that other giants. That does gi- sound like this <laughs> kind of game. Giant robots. Okay. So th- this is great. So it's actually a fairly well known game out there. These guys called Bad Crow Games got the license for Armored Crow and. Through two years of, pro- of um, planning and developing in Utah, they have come out with the Armored Core real-time strategy board game. So you're probably looking at me and going, "What do you mean by real-time strategy?" So how many board? So Drew, you said you played a couple of these board games. Yeah. All of them are usually you wait for a player to do something, right, and then you go on to the next player. They do mm-hmm. something, and it goes on until you know you go in a circle, Four right? Or five hours, yeah. yeah until it takes my wife's forever. like, "I'm going to bed. You guys are dumb." Yeah. yeah. So. This real-time strategy board game, you and everybody else makes movements at the same time. How does this work? <laughs> this sounds like chaos. So, so when they make a move, you make a move, and the idea is once you get in range with your weapons, and the way the 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 way it works is pretty cool too. Is there's an LED light under your robot figure? So this is a full figure game too. You're not using paper or anything. You have full sculpted figures out there, and there's a little LED light on there, and that's actually how you calculate. It where there's damage and stuff. And you have kind of point counters on the cards that keep track of things, so you may be able to do things if you have enough point counters on your card. Um, there's full buildings that you can use as cover and stuff, so that's why the LEDs are important. Um, oh Because have you ever done any war gaming? No. I so, mean, I've watched people play, like, Battle... What is it? Click? Uh, or? Yeah, it's not quite like Hero Battle Clips. It's more like... Um, war, um, yeah. Um, war, wow, war. I'm blanking. Like, Hordes and... What's the big one? Uh, Warhammer. Warhammer, um, I've yeah. seen some Warhammer, so, yes. Where, where you measure your distance and your line of sights and stuff. Yes, yes. This does that too, except there's a base that has an LED on it. And if the LED, you turn on the LED, if it shines and touches the other character, and you're within the right distance on there, you can, and you have enough energy. So they, you, you use these little cubes to keep track of how much energy and your recharge cycles and stuff are going hmm. on there. If you have enough, you can shoot at the other person. And they can shoot back at you, so it's kind of more dynamic, and you're not waiting for other people to do the you thing. You don't wait for your turn; you just 
yeah. roll, like, roll yeah. your dice or it, well, you, there's no dice or anything. It's moving these blocks and there's there's some timers I I believe on there, but the weapons are balanced in a way that if you if you have like a quick firing weapon, it may take longer for you to recharge on there. <sighs> whereas other weapons reload faster but they may take a little you know you have to be closer or farther to shoot them and they even have like melee weapons and stuff on there i'm blown away again like i was saying like <laughs> i don't know how these people come up with games this yeah. one right here this is like like wow yeah and you can blow Top up tier. the buildings too so you look in this picture you see those tall buildings and stuff yeah so as the game goes on your opponent can start shooting at those buildings and the platform you're standing on could not exist <laughs> later on in the game Huh. on there so you have to kind of calculate your cover and everything um and this is fully customizable too like all the tanks and the robots and stuff you can actually there's ways um and I, i'm not quite sure how the rules work on this but like you can blow off a guy's gun so he can't shoot with that gun and the models that are modular so you can actually take off that arm and say oh he's damaged yeah because that's <laughs> been like up to this point it's been like we'll just pretend he doesn't have that yeah okay. <laughs> this is crazy grandly amazing holy cow yeah it is it is like this is like i was like when i saw this wow um you can see all the different robots that comes you have the little tanks your resource collections um the buildings included those here are your led bases that kind of determine your line of sight um on there you have your character cards and your damage blocks and i i i saw this and i'm like wow it is worth it and so there's also a level i haven't mentioned these are unpainted figures mm -hmm. uh, which makes sense on miniatures on there there is a huge market i didn't know this but there are people their entire jobs are to paint these and they're really good at if they're really good at it people hire them to actually paint them and make them look super real and stuff if they don't want to do them strange. themselves it, it, you're right though they're out there i know these i know these people but it's yeah. strange to me it's still strange to yeah. me so how long do you think a game like this would take well, part of me says this is like a three, four hour, like run around, blow up the city and attack each other. But when you're doing real time and part, of, you know, it can happen without waiting for the other person and then action reaction. I wonder if it's shorter, like an hour, uh, like a campaign. So, or? The, so it runs on a campaign. So the campaign can last a week, a month, however long you want to get together. But each mission, only 20 minutes. Oh, on there. Okay. So I think there's about 12 missions that you can do on there. Then that's the full campaign. But say, you know, you only have an hour a right. week to get together. You can play a 20 minute campaign and call it good. With uh, all these pieces, it would take me 20 minutes to figure <laughs> out where all the pieces were and to be like, yeah, you take this one and you take this one. And here, did you get your little cubies? Yeah. So, so everybody's kind of like curious how the, the actions work. So this is how they describe it. The basic mechanics are simple. Call shots on your enemy if you have line of sight, then spend energy to activate weapons to destroy them. Um, and then your yeah, tactical decisions easy. start growing, you know, deep as you try to accomplish different wide range. Because since it is a campaign, you're part of a faction, and the goal of the campaign is to have your faction get the most points, right? So there's different scenarios and stuff that they're going to give you and you're going to have to achieve during each of these missions that you do, these 20 minutes missions you do. So it's and on top of all that, this is based on the um, armored court. Yeah. The armored court series. That's why these robots and everything look so detailed and stuff. Cause they're pulled straight from the game and they've made miniatures out of it. They got access to the original game models and stuff. Um, and you can see right here, here's kind of a picture of, the interchangeable parts the leg sockets are designed so you can put a magnet and stuff in there too so they can just snap on and off and make it easy and you can change the armaments and everything um it's about a two inch model too so they're, hmm. they're fairly sized models and stuff and i would expect to pay like two three hundred dollars for a game this this in depth with this many yeah, parts so their this. basic level i think is 79 dollars that comes and that's with the, the core set core set comes with eight models and everything i think that's actually a fair amount yeah it well, seems very fair you know because considering what you're getting all these models and everything um on there what well, me you know because i'm me uh, <laughs> i i, I want to get the ultimate bot the ultimate level one where it gives you the core set um an ai unleashed cooperative expansion that it's going to have a five to six player expansion because it's two to four normally, uh, and then an advanced recon pack, which is a Kickstarter exclusive, and a tactical warfare pack, which is a Kickstarter exclusive, and it's two hundred and ten dollars. 
Okay, that's which, not bad at all. Which again, people say it's a lot, but I've seen these miniature sets where one like miniature set could go for like 50, 60 bucks right. easily. And that's right. not like the full game. So this is this is honestly that's an amazing price. I don't I, when they go retail, that will not be that yeah. price at all. Um they're expected to deliver in about a year, which is not too bad on mm. there. And, and give or take another six months, I bet, yeah. I bet eighteen months. Yeah. But and that's so awesome. that that year is actually with the I think they gave themselves a sixty yeah. day buffer. Uh, good on, on good. there so um on there and i just i i'm just trying I, to figure out where i'm gonna find five and six people to play I, I, i'm hard okay, enough time finding okay two. i'll get this and then you and i will play it and then we just play yeah we'll play it's game it. night so like you know because we'll we'll schedule we'll schedule it on the off weeks of the of the kick cast <laughs> we'll, we'll play it on the off weeks. i'm I, I there are a lot of things i love about this it's 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 geeky it's very geeky but <laughs> just the fact that you have the 3d version that you can jump around on the board and that, that they're using led lights to like determine length and, and line of sight um it's just i love i love this next level stuff this yeah. is fantastic and it's so next gen yeah so they launched um a couple days is all right two days ago and they funded within like six hours wow yeah on there so the, they know they're gamers. Yeah, so this one's definitely a back for me. Um, I'll back it. Yeah, on there. So that is the Armored Core RTS, a real-time strategy board game. Um, I'm still blown away. I can't even yeah, think of I'm, it. I, like, I'm literally going to back this after this because I, I really want it. Um, and, hey, if you guys have tips on painting miniatures, because I am terrible, especially <laughs> things as small. But I, this is one of those games where, like, I kind of want to I kind of want to do it to, the, to, paint it to take it up to that next level. Yeah. Um, and um, you should. Yeah. All right. So on to our second project. Um, this is. And this. this don't this, even this, try to segue this because there's no way that you can go from. Oh, I, you know, I, I, I can do it. I can do it. So I. Uh, so like it is summertime in Utah yes. right now. Usually you're inside playing board games like Armored Core, right? <laughs> but when it's like 100 degrees outside, you know, how's your lawn looking right now, Drew, might I ask? <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. And so, bad. Do, so, like, do you just like set an arbitrary number on how much you water? So here's how it works at my house: I'm <laughs> watering the lawn. One one year out of five in this house, <laughs> one year have I had a green lawn that's worked out well. Some the guy that I bought the house from installed his own sprinkler system, and I've been fighting it every summer. <laughs> um, so this year we fired it up, and we got well into the you know the hotter weeks. This last probably the last three or four weeks, and I started noticing a lot of spots going brown in the front and the Mm -hmm. back and so i go out and check everything and twist all the knobs and check pressure and you know sometimes it was there and sometimes it wasn't and so i called the sprinkler doctor i think it's called dr sprinkler they have a logo that's kind of like dr pepper don't (laughs) don't call him the guy shows up and i'm like listen i've got some big problems with my lawn i can do this with my main valve and i turn it you know i turn it on and off and that's what i do like flushes the system or something real fast i was like if i do that before I run my set little mechanical thing, I get full pressure. If I don't do that every single day, I don't have any pressure. And he's like, oh, no, this happens all the time. You know what? You don't want to know the answer to this. Anyway, this poor kid gives me this line about how I need like a power booster and all kinds of other things to increase my pressure. And I was like, no, because I can get the pressure. I just have to un- you know, turn off my main water and turn it back on again, and I get all the same pressure. And it runs for hours and hours. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so it's... He tried to tell me. He didn't even know what city I lived in. Even though he was there at my house. He's like, Leighton has this problem all the time. You just It's just from Leighton. We just have this problem. I live here. I've lived here for all my life. And I looked at it. I was like, no. I'm like, this is, this is Ogden. I, you don't live in Leighton. <laughs> We're in a different place, buddy. Anyway, so I was very unhappy with them. They did not fix the problem. I still have brown spots on my lawn. Yep. So, so for, here's, the, for, here's for the, the solution. So for those years that you've actually been able to water it on there, how's your water bill looking? It's 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 hefty. Like it's, I am one of the guys yeah. that's just like if it's not green, put more water yeah. on it. And I it, think there was one section, the one section of a summer where I did every other day and it stayed green. Yeah. That was and, lucky. And especially here in Utah right now, one of the lakes that everybody's getting water from, there's a huge bloom of blue green algae. So oh, that's right. It's, down it's, south. it's it's toxic. So you can't use it. So there's a there's a city nearby where I live. They they use that as secondary water to water the lawns. They can't use it right now. So. Oh, well, yes, I don't have that problem. But, but let me tell but, you about this project that's going to solve my problems. It really it, Here's what's brilliant. <laughs> I have a very old, like, I still want to get a fancy Bluetooth-style sprinkler controller. But what I've got right now is, like, a really old, like, you run a knob back and forth and twisted knob. Wow. Yeah, I know. Mine at I, least has buttons. I press numbers. <laughs> uh, see, I didn't get to do that. But uh, when it works, it works good. 
But one of the things that this guy said to me that I honestly don't believe anything he said, but one of the things he said was, well, this this section here needs to run 40, 45 minutes. This one over here needs to go 45 minutes. And, and he doubled all of my time. And I was like, I don't remember having to do that last year. Like, I, you know, 25 was adequate every other day, even in the hottest part of the month. So something is wrong here. No, 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 double it up. Anyway, so I have just in the last week and a half doubled it. I got a little bit of green back, but still. This project is the answer. Check this out. Aqualone. Aqua, aqua alone. Yeah. I think it's Aqualone. Yeah, Aqualone. Aqualone saves your water bills for gardens and crops. Now, I'm still trying to figure out how it works with, like, home systems, but for gardens and crops where you're doing drip irrigation or maybe large sprinkler setups, this project uh, basically takes a, I don't know what you'd call this, like a, a, test, a test subject. What do they call it? Reference. A reference pot. A reference pot in the middle of your water line. They in they put their system in the middle of it, and that reference pot uh, has a certain amount of weight with the soil and the plant that's in there. And as you as you turn on the water to drip irrigate, it irrigates that one pot along with everything else down the line. And as soon as the water on that is heavy enough, like the soil is heavy enough, it flips a switch, turns off the water, and nothing else runs down the rest of the line. And then. As the weather or the atmosphere or the humidity or whatever else is playing a part in the elements of your exact garden area has an effect on that particular pot and water evaporate, evaporates, right, from that reference pot, it gets lighter, it, you know, it, it changes its weight just based on what water is not there, and it lifts up off the, the pressure plate or the trigger, just, just this, you know, minimal bits, and that turns on the water system again. So it is only watering when that soil is dry and needs water. Like, and they've done all these tests and they've been working on this thing for like 10 years, but uh, it seems like the perfect way to control irrigation when it comes to crops and larger things. I'm not sure grass is quite ready to you know, use this method, but for like my herb garden and other places, think, I mean, I just think about how brilliant it is to say, okay, why don't we just test one, one plant and as it dries out, turns on the water for everybody because most likely if this guy's drying out everybody's drying out so uh no energy no battery it's a plug and play system you just put your hose on one side or the other of it and then i think they have one for your um valves too but it's i don't know what do you you, you what am i missing here like this is a brilliant idea so i didn't even realize until you said it that it doesn't use any energy on there i mean that's genius i thought i'm like oh they added bluetooth or something in it hooks to your phone no this is the exact opposite yeah, like, it's like hands off and you don't even have to think about it but when it's a hot a hot couple of days it's going to turn the water on a little bit more because more is going to evaporate when it's a cool couple of days that that soil doesn't need any more water and it mm-hmm. won't it won't flip the switch yeah i i think this is genius because i am i'm not gonna lie when it comes to watering potted plants i am terrible at it because i'm like i don't know how much water this thing <laughs> needs right <laughs> I've got a lemon tree that stayed alive for a year. I'm amazed. Yeah, I'm surprised anything lasts a week in my care, to be honest with you. So, <laughs> like, this, this, this is a great way to do it where, uh, you know, that it, it, and it makes sense. It uses a reference point that's in everything else. So you're it's going to be a high chance of it. And it just seems like, who didn't, why didn't anybody think of this before? Right. Um, well, and it sounds like they've been, if you look at the timeline, the first prototype was almost 13 years ago. And then they filed their patents and it only... I don't know. They've won a couple of, of prizes, but it sounds like they've they've kind of streamlined it to get it out to the masses or I mean, try it out. They are they are sampling it right now in larger uh, nurseries and and uh, crop, and it's it's working. And the and the testimonials they have are are really solid about people who are using this and saying we save so much water because it doesn't get wasted. You don't wa- you don't need to run it. Wow. It doesn't run. They, they uh, the only thing I'm a little concerned about is they have a fairly aggressive. Um... Delivery because it looks like November of this year is when they're looking to get it to people. It does delivery to crowdfunding in November? How, do Do you know how far they are and like are they just they've do, they've done the tooling and they pretty much just need the money for the first run? That's what I'm wondering because if you look like at that. this, that worldwide pre production starts in September, October, November delivery. Yeah, they have they've run it pretty far. I know they've tested a lot. Some of the stuff I saw in their video looked to be 3d printed. So maybe that's where they've at least like they've gotten that far and now they're ready to do a mass production on it mm-hmm. on there. I, I, I think this is a great idea. Um, so is it a backtrack or sack for you? This is a back for me. This is totally a back for me. The water aqua alone is it's, and it's different than a lot of the projects we do, but I, I love what it might help me to keep things alive. <laughs> 
yeah, this this one's a great one. All right. So for our last project of the night, this is actually kind of in your wheelhouse. Um, you you remember the three D doodler, doodler, right? The first oh 3D yeah, three D doodler. Yeah, yeah. I spent some time with those people there. Um, and so one of the biggest problems, and actually probably the, one of the biggest problems in three D printing in general, is the price of the filament. Right? You don't think right. about it, but it tends to add up. Right, right, and and it takes a lot to print, you know, medium sized things. It takes a lot of filament. So yeah, so agreed. So this thing is called the Renegade, and it's a three D pen. They're 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 not like we're not the fastest, we're not the you know the most customizable and stuff. Even though you can customize it to, to a fair amount, at least to me, I don't know. I don't three D print anything, but it can run on plastic bags and bottles as its filament. Oh, so it uses plastic that is not filamented. Yeah, so your your PET um, plastic bottles that you have, you know, your bottle of Mountain Dew that you have and everything on there. So it can actually use five to seven millimeter strips that are cut out of PET plastic bottles, bags, or, you know, even those file dividers that sometimes you get and stuff. Right, right. From, from a thickness of four, um, 0.14 millimeters to 0.35 millimeters on there. Or if you're still, you know, you still want to use your regular filament, you can use that too. Um, and they even took it one step higher. So you're like, okay, now I'm going to have to cut myself and injure myself from cutting these plastic bottles to use it, use it right? <laughs> right, right. How do you get a plastic bottle into the right shape yeah. to feed this? So, so they have this little cutter called the Chupa, the chupa Cut, um, and you stick the bottle on there. The blade's actually on the inside, so you could have your girls use this because the blade's not exposed outside. You stick the bottle in, and you kind of just turn it, and it, peel, it peels. It peels. So, have you seen those people who can peel the apple, right, right, apples into like just one strip? That's uh -huh. essentially what this does, and it just puts it to the right size. And for all you guys who are watching the video, it cuts into that tiny strip. You just slip that into the back of the three D printer, and it has some crazy mechanical gear thing that feeds it all the way down. And there you go. And you, that does your filament, which then you're turning a bottle into, and whatever color the bottle is is the color yeah, of the filament, filament you, on there. Um, huh, like, what a great reuse. Yeah, I, I love this. Um, and like it's it's straightforward. See, here's the little extruder, the design they, they have. So this little, uh, supposedly this little gear pushy thing is very efficient. I I don't know. <laughs> it just, is it, it's just heating it up as it goes down and hits the, the front yeah. end and they can draw. Yeah, I, I can't say I'm an expert in 3D printing. That is your, your realm. But like does this not seem like a great idea for... You know, not only recycling the bottles that you have around the house, right. but saving a little money at the same time because you don't yeah. have to. Because how much is filament? It, it starts adding up, right? Right, like a little pack in the early early days of the three doodler, I believe, like an early pack of maybe I can't remember if it was a ten or twenty pack, but they're the sticks. Um, gosh, those are like close to ten or twenty dollars. Like it, it felt like it was a dollar stick. I mean, it was it was it's pretty costly. But imagine if you could just walk down the street and be like, oh, there's some trash. I mean filament. I mean, you know, let me yeah. take that home. It's like, oh, that's a cool color. Or you're like, huh, yeah. I'm done with my Mountain Dew. Rinse, yeah. rinse it out, and there you go. Now you can make a cool sculpture or something out of it. So my biggest like first thought is like, uh, part of filament, you get a consistent type of plastic that melts at consistent heats, you know, that kind of thing. When you're using random things to become filament, I think you'd it would be a long, maybe a higher learning curve, steeper learning curve to mm -hmm. figure out this particular one I can draw like this. You know, this type of filament, I have to draw slower or stick on paper first, right? There's some other element to it. But I, I love, I love what they're, what they've kind of come up with as a, uh, as an idea for the, the chupa cut and for the parts and the pieces. This, this makes like a nice little craft yeah. fun corner. Yeah, and so, like, look at that chupa cut. You just stick it on there and you just pull the strip out. Oh, that is so, see, look at that. That looks <laughs> that like is a, great, isn't too. it? Is that a gift? Because it doesn't look like it's uh, the ending. It, it's, a, it's a video on there. It's oh, there's. Second, but like, like would I mean? Because I could, I you know I wouldn't have your your girls go here. Have a pair of scissors. Go cut that up so we can use oh, that yeah, on a three. No, no. But this, you're like, yeah, sure, stick it on, go. Um, and so I I love it. And the only way you can actually replace the blade is you have to stick in a similar size blade for it to go in. So it's like you have no chance of cutting yourself, even replacing the cutting blade into it um I, I love how they thought of kind of the safety features of it and i love the recyclability of it just because i mean let, let's be honest all of us still use plastic bottles everywhere it's true it's true i'm not I'm, yeah yeah 
Um, I really love this though that you could spin up a bunch of bottles, have that filament just sitting aside, you know, ready to go for your projects, and then just get designs. This little thing, did you see the uh, little stand that has the oh yeah that has holes the, and the, the spools? Yeah, the chupa cut, and and then that. You, you can stick the thing in the middle and stuff. That's great. Right, and and you got places kind of hold filaments or extra things, and then the bobbins at the bottom, like yeah. those are straight up bobbins. It's like <laughs> I I've already ripped twenty bottles, and here they are sitting on bobbins. What a fun little thing! I here's what I wish though, uh, and maybe and maybe there's it's just a matter of having it in my hands, but I wish that I knew right away like what functional things could I do with a three D printing pin? Yeah, there's lots of fun little art things I can trace things, I can make cool name plates. But what functional? Can I repair things? Can I? You know, what, I just I'm not I'm at a loss. But, <laughs> but that's just me just being like, how do I justify spending this money? That's really what it comes yeah, down to. Yeah, and I looked at the price. It's about the same price as a 3D doodler. It's about eighty bucks, I think. About eighty bucks, yeah. yeah about, on there, a little more if you want the chupa cut on top of it. But you're which buying, totally worth it. You're, you're yeah. buying a you know another cutting utensil on top of it. You can't kind of hard to compare that. Right. Um, on there, but I totally think, back for I me think you can build up to if I'm looking at this picture right. Like it's you know, you're building a three D thing, so it's not uh -huh. just on a flat surface. Right, and you can, even with a three D you could because it dries quick and dries uh cools down quick enough while it's coming out of the tip of the pin that you can draw straight up into the air and over. Like it it's pretty amazing the way that you can draw it in 3D space with these things. I think there would be some learning curves with just different types of plastic reacting different to that. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, it's a back for me. This is a brilliant idea. Have they made not the goal yet? Are they they are almost there. So they are looking for 25,000 pounds um, on there, okay. which is right now they're at 21,655 pounds. If you convert that into US dollars, that's about $28,000, and they're looking for about 32 and a half. Well, they're nearly there, yeah, especially with the, another there. three weeks to go or more. Yeah. Um, I, I love this. Like Very nice. It is, it's such a great thing. Um, all right, so that's all for our regular projects. Drew, did you even look at this uh, project? I, I, no, I, I, was, I, I saved this surprise for the end. I, I, I love always love surprise. it. So we're kind of going back to the board game. Wow, this is a board game. I tend not to put a lot of board games into the show because you have to explain the mechanics, yeah, which but kind of can you get, get dull. three in one show. Yeah. What? Wow, <laughs> you're there. nuts. So this is called Courts and Castle by Semi-Evil, semi Semi-Genius. I don't know. Wait, is this the sack of the week? Yes, this is this is this is our sack of the week on there. Um, <laughs> this is great. So he's looking to raise three thousand six hundred and ninety dollars, right? Okay, good choice. Yeah, so, round number right there. Yep. So he's plots and counterplots abound in the courts. Pawn invade castles, wield game changing trumps. Uno meets risk meets battleship, right? Uno meets risk mm -hmm. meets battleship. So he he's raising funds to manufacture, advertise, and sell his own very his very own board game, Courts and Castles, right? Okay. So that's great. He actually explains this fairly well um, on there. But I want everybody who's watching the video, and if you're not, Drew, say stop when we get to the end of the backing tiers. Okay. 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 Uh, we're starting it right now with the one dollar. It's limited $1. one limited one of one. And we're going. We're scrolling down. We're scrolling down. We're scrolling down. We're still at one dollar though. Every one of these is yep. still one dollar. We're still scrolling down. We're scrolling down even more. We're still scrolling. <laughs> we're still scrolling. Limited one I'm, of I'm one. Scroll, I'm starting to scroll a little faster. Or we might be here for a while. We're up to three dollars now. Um, we're at the end of the description of the project. This is huge. And we're going. Which is still really long. Like that description yeah. is massive. Yeah, we're we're going. I'm still going. I'm a. If you look at the scroll wheel on the side of my screen, I'm about halfway right now, and we're at uh, seven dollars. And your and the little scroll like handle is like a yeah. seven. Yeah, center. it's it's yeah, it's <laughs> tiny. I'm still going. I'm still going. I turned on my hyper scroll so I we <laughs> get to the end. <sighs> so the last one is 110 or more. You get the game. You you name the king's territory and more. It's still one on one. Most of these are one on one, and there's about seventy six tiers. What are you doing? <laughs> you thought so hard about this game. I had to put Uno with risk with battleship. What? what you... <sighs> Nobody wants seventy six tiers. Seventy six tiers in the big parade. <laughs> <laughs> it's like who's gonna decide what to like and you look at it he could combine a lot of these and you know just 
send out a survey. This is what surveys are for. Yes. <laughs> well, it seems like a lot, of, a lot of these are naming rights. Yeah. Name one of these three medium city, city states. So, I, I mean, the best way to do it is just be like first come, first serve. So if you answer the survey first, you get to name it. And if somebody asks for the same spot, you can even back, hey, sorry, this location is taken. You want to pick from these available things. And you, the game copy doesn't show up until the $80 tier. Yeah. So, which is like six from the bottom. Yeah. So you, you're you not getting the game until near the end. And I mean, I was patient enough to go down the tier level. I don't <laughs> Who think. else would even get that far down? <laughs> Well, I, I'm zoom back up to the top here if I can. Yeah, yeah. Four people. Four people so, have made it. To and the- so he's made $7 <laughs> on there. And like I said, the description and stuff is fairly, you know, I think it's detailed on there. Um, and he kind of explains everything. But this is something you definitely don't want to do when you're making a project is add 76 tiers. To right. It. You're, you're adding a, a <laughs> uh, obstacle, a huge <laughs> obstacle to getting anybody to actually fund it, like, you know, to give you anything to, to run with. This is, oh, man. Yeah, and, you know, and I, you know, if you're raising that much money, um, kind of update your graphics a little bit. <laughs> I, can't is, say, uh, I can't say I was too impressed with this map that he has right here. <laughs> he made it in MS Paint. It's ready, it's ready <laughs> to go. This is showtime. He has, a, he has a first update, by the way, uh, that he updated about a week ago that says... Um, Oh, this we have, was... we have first backers. That means there's only 238 more perks left. So he's counting like each individual available. Yeah, perk. and so and then here's another one. Um, he had another update on the 11th. He went underwent some revisions. Core mechanics are the same, but the qu- quantity of various pieces were restructured. Um, oh, <laughs> on there. So there's more small castles, but they're smaller in sizes, and the number of medium castles have gone down um on there so i don't know how that even how, how even that changes for more tears. perk ideas at the bottom let me know if you have other perk ideas no no you don't need any more <laughs> it's done like wrap it up and just have like a 20 dollar naming tier and then an 80 dollar game <sighs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's semi evil semi genius but i think it's more semi i don't want to be mean <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. too many. Just like, you just you overshot this one, buddy. Like yeah, no one's gonna back any of these tiers because they're like there's too many options. You don't you, want you that. You and I should back. You and I should just pick one of these tiers and be like, it was a hard choice. And, and I'll, I'll decide. And ugh, who knows? Will 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 I get I, the game with it or not? <laughs> yeah, I'll be the female merchant of rubies credit, and I will name my city. Too many Poon, tiers. Poonhammer. Too many hate. Too many <laughs> tiers. <laughs> City uh, of two uh, Poor guy. Yeah, so that's court and castles. Um, I don't see. I don't even want to look through the game rules now to see how it's played. I don't but, either. It's like I skimmed through it and it looked like it was, you know, Uno probably not the greatest sure. game rules, but it seemed fairly thought out and developed. But like, yeah. But you look at like, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to do apples and oranges here, but courts and castles versus like, what was the armored the, core the armored RTS? core game? <laughs> There's a night and day difference here. <laughs> yeah. And it's not just the tier levels. There's a <laughs> lot of things going on. Whew. On that. All right. And unfortunately, that is the end of the episode. True. where does the time ever go? Well, I don't know. Right. We stretched this one out pretty long with, with all uh, kinds of things, but it was worth it, friends. On there. I, I, I love it. So if you guys have suggestions for Sacks of the Weeks or projects, or you have a kick shout you want us to talk about, send us an email, kickcast at ktdata.net, or leave it on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash kickcast. The Twitters, it's always, I mean, that's how you can catch up with Drew and see where he's traveling and stuff. And, you know, you should tweet at night 20 saying, hey, I love that camera. Keep using it. You should just, (laughs) yeah. If you're listening to the audio podcast just for the sake of experiencing a real nice camera, go find find the video version. Yeah, you can tweet him at night 20, at KT David before myself, or at KitCast for the show. Of course, if you're listening to the audio version and you want to see Quartz and Castle and all its 76 Mm -hmm. tiers... Head on over to kickcast.net. That's where all the show notes are. And of course, we always love it when you guys watch live. Rev, you're a trooper out there right now. Um, Thanks, Rev. Our next episode's April 2nd or August. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, August. Got, you know, you want a hiatus for eight months? You just let me know. <laughs> uh, August is good. August, uh, that I, scares I, me even I, worse, though. I, I can't wait eight months Summer to see you gone. again, Drew. I know, I it's true. Summer is gone, Katie. Like, it's over. I know. 
If you want to tweet me at night 20 to console me because my summer is nearly done, please do so. <laughs> Pat my back. Hey, at least you got a summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, good point. I have Thank an you. adult job, and if I want a summer, I take my own vacations, and there was no Nertacular this year. Oh, I, yeah, I, I am enjoying my summer. This is true. On there, so um, August 2nd is when our next episode will be. And until then, my friends, see you. Good night. Thank you.